So I've noticed on my social media scrolling that many of the accounts the algorithm suggests I follow are fellow fantasy authors like myself. It's like I plugged in my hashtags and it just starts populating. I try to give coverage for a variety of different writers, uh, not just fantasy, but every now and then I come across some wonderful gems. This month's interviewee is no exception. I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and this month I'm interviewing fantasy author P.L. Stewart. Happy Saturday and welcome back to The Right Way. I have just a few announcements before we jump into this month's author interview, starting with next week is my June writing workshop at the Hanford branch of the Kings County Library. We'll be talking about overall story structure and the intentionality that you as the author put into the story that you are creating. That session will be held from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the upstairs lecture room. The event is it's free, and the only thing that you need to bring is a, a pen, a notepad, uh, or if you're a little bit more on the high-tech side, a laptop or a tablet. Second, last week I announced that I'm looking for a new set of authors to interview during Season 6. If you are an indie author, I would love to feature you and your work on the right way. So please feel free to use the Google form that is linked in the video description. You can go ahead and hit me up on social media, either Instagram or on Twitter. Or if you'd prefer to be a little bit more direct, you can send me an email at gkjpublishing at gmail.com. I connected with Mr. Stewart a few months ago through Twitter and he was all too eager to share his work with my audience. He's got a brilliant creative mind, so I hope that you enjoyed this month's interview. All right, PL, thank you for joining my, joining me on the show. Uh, how are you doing this afternoon? Uh, great, Garrett. Thanks so much for having me. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, tell me about your work and what it is that you write. Okay, well, my name is P.L. Stewart, and I'm the author of, uh, right now, the books that are out are A Drown Kingdom and The Last of the Atlanteans. Those are the first two books in the Drown Kingdom saga, which is a seven-book uh, high fantasy series, an epic fantasy, um, you know, a la Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, that sort of fair. Um, it's probably a bit on the dark side. Um, it, uh, it follows a uh, my version of uh, the legend of the lost uh, realm of Atlantis. What would happen if it sunk, but there were survivors and uh, what happened to the survivors. So it follows the uh, main main character. He's a prince. He's part of the last surviving member of the royal family uh, and uh, of Atlantis. And he, he takes his people across the sea to this new realm, tries to establish himself. Um, but he's very, uh, he's very flawed character he wants he's a conqueror he's a he's someone who's a colonialist he wants to impose his uh his uh his culture and his uh viewpoints and his religion on this new continent but uh this new continent is filled with uh warlords and mages and uh people who have no plans for him to impose uh, his will upon them so obviously that that's, that's uh that's that's the uh that's that's a recipe for lots of clashes and uh yeah. and conflict so yeah that's what yeah uh, so in your world does uh do people know that Atlantis exists, that it, that people survived, or is it still kind of this this idea like, hey, it's it's part of myth? 
No, no, it's very much uh, known. Uh, Atlantis is known again as a colonial superpower and and this this huge um, you know empire with uh, you know naval supremacy and um, you know but but not not trusted, not well trusted, not regarded in many circles. But um, you know, seen as very being very haughty and uh, people who you know again are are their their uh, mandate is to impose their their way of life on those that they subjugate. So um, yeah, Atlantis is very much uh, in in my world, uh, well known to to the other uh, the other nations in the other universe. What time period does this take place in? Like I- I'm assuming with mages and warlords and stuff, there's like a level of medieval quality to it. Yeah, it's 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 analogous to that sort of setting. I mean, obviously, it's not straight historical, so it's not like I can tell you the you know give you a, a, a date because it's not our world. It's something similar to our world, but but it's in a, in an age where you know uh, relatively the technology compares to medieval type, uh, you know, weaponry and 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 uh, you know construction things like that. So. Very cool. So how did you get into writing? Was this something that you've always wanted to do? Or was this like, at some point you hit this point in your life where you're like, I'm an adult now, I just want to write a book? Yeah, I, I guess it's a combination of like, I've always wanted to write, but uh, and I've, I've toyed and tinkered with it throughout my life. I'm pretty old now, as you see by the grays, I'm in my 50s. Um, but I, I really only got serious in my late 40s and finally published in my, my 50s. So, um, you know, it was something that I didn't have the time or the mindset perhaps to do uh, raising a busy family young and mm-hmm. working, you know, working career. And, you know, I'm still working full time, still have a regular full time job. But, but um, you know, once as I got towards, um, you know, the middle middle part of my life, um, you know, and my, you know, kids, you know, become adults and you become an empty nester, you know, you just have a lot more time to devote to writing. So that's, that's really what I yeah. did, essentially. So uh, obviously Plato and, and, and the theory and, and the legend of Atlantis are big influences for you as a writer. What other influences do you draw from? Uh, well, you know, uh, classical tales like that, like the Iliad, the Odyssey, you know, um, you know I, certainly um, iconic, um, more modern, but now be, what we consider classical fantasy, like, you know, The Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Tolkien, T.H. White, uh, more modern, um, Fantasy writers, N.K. Jemison, uh, John Gwynn, um, you know, Jenny Wirtz, um, you know, some some phenomenal writers, you know, over the last 40 to 50 years. So, yeah, they're, they're, and, and so many more. But, yeah, those are those are a lot of my my influences. Um, you know, I, I, I write, you know, I said I like to think I write in a more old school classical style, you know, um, you know, lots of world building and lore associated with it. Uh, hopefully what people will find to be thrilling battle scenes and a lot of political intrigue and, and you know, so I, I like books like that. So that's that's what I write. If you were to give any advice to other would-be authors out there, what would you tell them? I would say um, finish the book and keep writing and keep trying to get published no matter what. If you're self-publishing, you know, don't give up. You know, um, obviously that route is a lot more direct and, you know, maybe if it's a case of whether it's finances or whatever it is, you know, find your best route to get published. Uh, be persistent if you're doing the going the route and you're querying, trying to get uh, an agent and then hoping that your agent can find you a book deal. Um, you know, keep going. It can take years. You know, uh, keep working at it. Uh, keep improving your craft. You know, um, yeah. So my, my essential thing is don't give up. Uh, be persistent and and have that commitment to, you know, carry on and, you know, till your book is published, right? And, um, you know, that's perseverance is probably the, the, one of the, the most important qualities you'll need as a writer to be successful. So. Awesome. Well, PL, how can people get a hold of you? How can they can make those connections? How can they get a hold of your work and uh, enjoy your series? Well, uh, uh, um, my the best way to get a hold of me, uh, my website for my books is www.plstort.com. It's the Drown Kingdom Saga. If you Google it, I'm sure it'll come up on on. Uh, through Google search, um, you know, that's where you find out more about the books and, you know, what I'm working on when the next release are coming on. I also have a blog published there. I do interviews of creatives in the writing community called Six Elemental Interviews, named after my six elemental goddesses in my in my work. So I feature creatives, you know, uh, from traditionally published and self-published authors. Um, I do, um, you know, again, I post a monthly blog as well. Um, you'll also see all my media links to my interviews. Uh, I am a blogger myself, an assistant editor with Before I Go Blog. 
a blogging site led by the one full of that tabler. So you'll see my reviews posted there uh, and also on Goodreads, a mix to Goodreads. Um, I'm active on social media, Twitter at PL Stuart Wright is the best place to get a hold of me there. Um, that's my preferred social media. And I am on Instagram and Facebook, but not quite as active, still fairly active, but not, not quite as active, but Twitter is really where I am most of the time. Um, you know, and I, I do, uh, with, I, I'm lucky to co-host with two wonderful booktubers, uh, maybe two pages and, and, uh, Steve from Steve Talks Books. We do a author interview feature for fantasy, sci-fi, horror authors, um, and creatives, booktubers, bloggers, etc. Um, called Page Chewing. And it's, uh, it's fairly, fairly, beginning to be fairly popular and I'm honored to do it. And it's, it's great to give back to the community and feature creatives and do interviews like that. So yeah, awesome. yeah I'm pretty, I'm pretty active out there. That's awesome. Well, PL, thank you very much for being on the show. And uh, I really, it was great to learn more about the Drowned Saga. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to see if I can get myself a copy because it <laughs> just sounds like a really, really killer idea for a story. Well, thank you so much. I'm really honored. And thank you so much, Garrett. I'm so, so privileged to be here. And thanks so much for giving me the chance to speak to you today. If you're interested in connecting with P.L. Stewart through social media or picking up copies of his work, you'll find those links by visiting the video description. If you're interested in seeing the uncut, unedited version of the interview, you can easily sign up as a supporter through Patreon. There are support options of $1, $3, and $5 per month, and all patron levels get access to the uncut interviews. But the higher you go, the cooler the rewards. Hey, thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on new videos. You can support the channel on Patreon and the merch store. Those links can be found down in the video description. And of course, make sure to tune in in two weeks from today for this month's Creator's Corner writing tips as we continue on talking about elements of world building. See you then.